I just want to know how much the fucking stars, uh, Stalin Sarsgar make for this movie because it probably was not enough. Like I was reading for his makeup, it was eight hours to apply and two hours to take off. So anytime he was in, like they had to film him, he had to take uh, a pill so he he wouldn't have to fucking piss and shit because that would have fucking took forever to do. Like, imagine that. Like, I'm fucking claustrophobic. I couldn't imagine fucking, like, being in there for, like, fucking eight hours. Chris, this is going to be an easy one, man. Let me introduce to you the 2025 Academy Awards for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Cinematographer, and Best Supporting Actor. Because we're talking movies, we're talking Dune, Part 2. Starring Chris's favorite, Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, and Rebecca Ferguson. Based on the book Dune by Frank Herbert, and written by John Spates and Dennis Villeneuve, who also directed Chris May thy knife chip and shatter. Tighten your grip, Robin, or feel mine on your neck. Sandworms back again. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of How'd You Like That Movie? Uh, as you could probably guess, we're going to be talking about one of the biggest films on the planet right now, Dune Part 2. Uh, and if you want, you can actually go back and take and listen to our episode where we talked about the first sandstorm extravaganza, sandworm extravaganza, Dune 1. Uh, Scott, why don't you take us into the desert? <laughs> All right, so, yeah, um that's the thing you like that because that's probably all you're gonna like about me talking about this movie this episode so no no i'm gonna say like um when we uh, just hold on a second this uh this is getting tight in here (laughs) Uh let me tell you just this baby alone gives you ah it keeps on going out this baby alone it's all about the marketing you just put a little lube right here and it fits it's not as tight as you think for all, for all of those just listening and not seeing, Scott brought his uh, favorite toy from the Dune movie, the Sandworm Fuck Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, you know, like, it's, I was, to see how many people bought that when I went to go watch this, I was fucking surprised. We, we bought it as a joke. My son wanted it, and... I, I thought it was the funniest. Oh, your son, ever. air quote, wanted it, right? Yeah, yeah he yeah. did. He did. Don't worry, right. daddy. Daddy. Daddy will hang on to that for you. <laughs> but uh, his mommy won't hold on to it for him. So <laughs> there you go. All right, you just jump in the shower. Let me tell you, you just get some of that fucking Hans Zimmerman music on there. You're like. Dah, dah, dah. You're like, I don't even know what movie I watched, but I enjoyed it. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, anyway let's, yeah, let's get into the movie. Yeah, so going into this one, like... Instead of uh, into your cup. Stop it! <laughs> as we, um, as you were saying, like, when we discussed the first one, um, it was all right, but it wasn't anything, I think, spectacular. I think with this one, it was m- my complaint, and it's probably uh what's going to be on yours but my complaint is i think this movie should have been longer because i really the fuck i i do i because i think they rushed that third that third act very very much right like if the whole movie is you know the confrontation of uh fade rada and uh you know uso um to have their fight just be like five minutes maybe like to me even even that whole like call it an invasion call it a rebellion call it or actually it wouldn't be an invasion be a rebellion yeah it was like the whole movie so the movie is two hours and 46 minutes long and yes the the lead up is the individual confrontation between those two characters and then the like clashing of worlds between the rebels and the colonizing force and yeah it's like and bang 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 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the thing. Like they, they really did. Because you, you're thinking like, well, especially like, like I think every conversation that they are building up in these two hours, it just seemed like they're like, fuck, the this is this movie's going over because like. If you have Josh Brolin's character for like fucking two hours, just being like, I can't wait to get my fucking hands on Batista because he fucked up, like he killed my best friend and shit. And then their conversation is not like 30 seconds. It's like one swipe and then a knife swipe and he's dead. Yeah, I thought that was also very anticlimactic. I thought there was going to be like a battle royale kind of thing there. And it was just like that. Moving yeah, on. No. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. That's why I wish like it was longer now we'll, we'll never get or we could or or here, here's the suggestion we could take out all of this other just like posing on fucking sand dune shots and then have more fighting it's like I, I i actually agree with you that there should have been more fighting it was anticlimactic obviously i've said that word like three times now but <laughs> we could just get rid of what felt like fucking filler cinematography and i just do want to point out b- before starting the show i did talk to our producer about this He's read the books and he, when he saw the film, he said like, oh, some of that stuff is in there because it like works with the book and blah, blah, blah. Great. I did not write, read a fucking 800 page fucking novel before going to watch this movie. So what you show me is what I get to judge your fucking movie on. Okay. Keep going, Scott. I've also read the book, but, um, you fucking and, and, nerds. You guys are fucking Well, that was, that was my complaint when we said the first one, I'm like, Austin Butler's character should have been kind of foreshadowed in part one right like even a a comment but there wasn't really anything till till after but i think with this it's you know it's all about getting to i guess part three if they do messiah or not which i don't know how that like how most people say dune is unfil 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 unfilmable I don't know how they're going to do Messiah because that goes like it's not even politics anymore. It's more uh, religion based. Right. So, you know, so I don't know how they're going to kind of rein that in if the first two movies that he's going is all politics. Um, But I think this movie was fucking beautiful to watch. You can't say it's not right. No. And I think I said the same thing about the first one. Listen, you know what, this is, I'm going to get right into my quote right away because it kind of really encapsulates everything I feel about this. So Dave, David Ehrlich of IndieWire, not only does this movie pick up exactly where the last one left off, it also carries over the strengths and weaknesses that made the previous chapter so astonishing to look at, but stultifying to watch. I mean, we could basically end my position on this show, on this film right now on that statement. Like, it is gorgeous. Like what, what he's doing with his cameras and like what he's doing with his blocking and all of that gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. Give him the Oscar for next year's cinematography right now. Uh, I mean, he brought back his DO, DOP, Greg Fraser, who uh, has also worked on like Batman and vice and lion and fact fo- Fox catcher. So very experienced DOP one. I believe he won the Oscar for Dune one or part one. Sure. Fine. Give him that Oscar. craft craft awards. Great. You, had a fucking slow as fuck. I fell asleep multiple times again. What again. time did you go watch this movie, man? Huh? What time did you go watch it? Three I think I, I, I think I was gonna say I think you're at the age that you you have to hit the 11 a.m. matinees, man. Why are you Why are you so old? But because, <laughs> um, yeah, we went at night and yeah, we didn't fall asleep. We were. Like I it, wear it held... my sandworms at night. So I... <laughs> <laughs> like it held it held um my interest, right? Now I think in terms of my complaints of this film, I think some You've of already it said is... it's not long enough. <laughs> well that, but also I think going to the you know Christopher Nolan school of uh sound mixing, because there was a lot of times where you know, they're doing the music while the people are talking and I couldn't even hear what they're saying, right? Because the music was over their their speaking, which, you know, that was to me, like, I, I even asked my son, like, what the fuck are they saying? And he was like, I have no idea. But 
uh that's my one complaint i think uh austin butler fucking killed it in this movie and i do mm. think he'll get the Oscar. is that why and that's why you're giving him your uh supporting actor already yeah i think he'll get it since he never got it from uh elvis i think now this will be the one that they'll they'll fucking give it to him because he he did well like maybe they'll give it to him tomorrow on Sunday, sorry, on Sunday, sorry, we uh, the, the, last week, maybe because we're in the future right now, recording this show, right? So, well, I don't think they can. Oh, oh they'll just be like, "Fuck it, we don't." They'll even be like, have to "You know what? Anybody. We all just came from Dune Two. By the way, Butler, you here, buddy? Bam, we, we got there an extra go. Oscar in the back. Here you go. Yeah, yeah, they'll have Warren Beatty being like, and best supporting actor, uh, Austin Butler <laughs> for Elvis. Um, yeah. But, yeah. But, I mean, but the cast on this, so you got Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, Javier Bardem, Austin Butler, Josh Brolin, Florence Pugh, David Batista, Christopher Walken, and Stellan Skazgard. Oh, and then uh, Anna Taylor Joy with like a little cameo. That is a fucking insane cast. And you know who the two weakest fucking actors on screen are? Number one, Timothy Chalamet. Number two, Zendaya. Neither one of them. So Zendaya looks, Zendaya looks the part as far as like, I believe her in her role. At no point do I like, Timothy Chalamet is the worst part of this fucking movie. And what I love to hate at is the only times that he has to like raise his voice and be like aggressive. It is the times when he is the least believable in that space. And Zendaya- Are you talking about when he uses the voice? Or even when he just is like, now do it like he's just even using his voice but he's trying to be like assertive it's like shut up man seriously go fucking sit the fuck down uh and zendaya is like kind of a wooden fucking actor and i've made this comment before about Villeneuve. actually i'm starting to think i just don't like denis Villeneuve's movies <laughs> like uh they always look really good but i feel like especially his like latest stuff like blade runner and and those types of things um I don't think he's very good at directing actors or, you know, scripts that he's written. Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on because the best acting is actually just coming out of people who are really good at like, so Florence Pugh is like one of my favorite actors. I think she just kills it in every role she's in, regardless of how bad the fucking scripts are or not. And like when she's on screen, there's like a power in, in just her presence. Um, And where Timothy Chalamet, who's like the lead is like, so not like he is not cast correctly other than maybe because he really i don't know resembles the person in the book i don't know but like his acting ability is not great he's it's his he's got the same acting in every fucking movie he's in and seriously zendaya uh again she she's basically just a pop culture icon at this point also not a fantastic actor i mean the script is fucking boring i was gonna say like uh in terms of your criticism of villain you now it's funny because i had like a like i think we've been doing this way too long because i already know where you're kind of coming from and there there's a quote he did uh i don't know if you saw it for for this movie and he goes uh his quote about uh, let me see i think i've got it here uh the greatest co-host on a podcast in the history of podcasts is chris oh okay cool yeah yeah i've got that quote too yeah yeah i I just it's a good thing he didn't say a last name because we'll never know who chris is but uh (laughs) well you just know it's like share Right? You or Madonna. <laughs> no, he goes, uh, his quote is, movies have been corrupted by television. Frankly, I hate dialogue. Dialogue is for theater and for television. I don't remember movies because of a good line. I remember movies because of a strong image. I'm not interested in dialogue at all. Pure image and sound, that is the power of cinema. But that is not something obvious when you watch movies today. Okay, but again, we and we've ta- talked about this specific actor, Benicio Del Toro. I'm not saying that you need a bunch of dialogue, but even when you're not using dialogue, you need to still have presence in your scene. So what I'm saying is that both Zendaya, specifically though Timothy Chalamet, I don't feel their presence in a scene. They are just there. They are just there being directed around the, the screen. Like they 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 are not captivating. You can do so much with your eyes. You can do so much with your body language. And again, Del Toro specifically, like, will have lines taken out. He's like, my character doesn't need to say a bunch of shit. So I'm not poo-pooing him for wanting to be more uh, show, not tell. I'm saying that the stuff that he is telling and even some of the stuff that he's showing is kind of fucking pointless. Like, again, very, very beautiful to watch, but not really engaging. 
I mean, well, the best part of this movie is the fucking sandworms. Those are dope, by the way. Uh, trust me, I know. So yeah, late I know, night you know. With, some, with some vodka. <laughs> make, make but, uh, late night. But uh, uh, the spice. The, the spice is nice. But um, like, I think Zendaya I liked in this film. But again, I think it's it's the last image that like the end of the movie is what makes you remember the movie. Right. And if you have two hours, 15 minutes about their, you know, technically blossoming love, right. Her finally accepting him falling for him, stuff like that. They're in a relationship. And then in two oh, spoiler, seconds, spoiler for those who haven't seen it, because the movie. Just well, came. it's also a fucking book. It's been done by fucking. If you if you've seen fucking Lynch's, like the endings are still the same. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So it's this isn't a, a fucking spoiler, but like the way with this, it's like okay, you know, he's technically, you know, seeing the future or whatever. He sees all the possibilities, and he he only sees one that's gonna get technically something resolved that doesn't kill a lot of fucking people right um and then in two seconds it's like okay this is what's gonna happen he just beat the guy he's like i'm now fucking i'm now fucking marrying floris blue and then it's just like i'll be honest no I, I, if i was given that option i would i would probably also take that option so <laughs> right but i'm saying there's no lead up there there's no nothing if he like he knows what's going to happen you'd figure he would be breaking it to you know his baby mama uh like listen this is the only way that this is going to work right but just to see the end and then her just like storm off and like and then just start walking the dunes on her own even though he's now like the fucking leader that, to me that's that's the thing everything ends on um i won't say a downer cuz it's no empire strikes back but, Which they um, keep making, they keep making reference to, like, oh my god, this is like because the idea being, Empire did a better job uh, than the first film. It's a much better story. I'm like, I guess you could say that about any good sequel that's better than the first one. I guess. Yeah. So, so that's the thing, right? Like, from what I remember in the book too, like there, there was the conversation between Paul and Shani, him literally saying, like, "This is what I have to do." Like before it's done, this is what I have to do. But know that, um, you know, she's just my wife by by title. Like all my heirs are coming. Yeah, don't through. worry, like, baby. She... Don't worry, baby. This is just this is just work. I'm. This is just yeah. work over here. I, like, I there, still love you. <laughs> yeah, there, there's no wedding night. Like me, it's me and you. Me and you are going on the honeymoon. She's gonna be like mowing the sand, right? Making sure the worms are fed. Yeah. But and, and that's the thing. From what I remember correctly, like you know, the big reveal that the spice is the worms that didn't even fucking happen in this yet, right? Like I don't remember them ever really saying. Uh, you just basically that the... was like breaking news. I did not know that that was a thing. So, yeah, that's in both movies. Like in the movie, you find out the fucking spice is the worms. Oh shit! Oh shit! But um, but yeah, I don't remember them actually fucking saying it. So I I just want to like talk a bit about some of the fight stuff that I thought was not done well. Uh, so first off. And again, I'm not even going to, if, if you're going to like comment and be like, yeah, but in the book, that's how it happened. You know what? You know who else would fuck that up was Eyes Wide Shut, Stanley Kubrick. Don't stick to the fucking book if it doesn't really translate to the picture, because unless we've read the book, it doesn't matter. And that's asking a lot of your audience. So the gladiatorial scene. So first off, I thought it was beautifully shot, the black and white, like all that type of thing. The fact that they're supposed to be showing like how badass this motherfucker is. And so in order to do that, again, spoiler, spoiler, if you haven't seen the movie yet, you know, they have two kind of basically drugged up opponents and then one that is not. Okay, that's cool all the way till there. Could we maybe get a guy that doesn't just look like some old man? Like, could we have like an actual formidable opponent? And this is why this matters is because Paul has become this like insurgent leader. He's like badass motherfucker. Plus he's like royally trained from when he was back on his home planet and like hand-to-hand -hand combat and stuff like that. What you need to show is Paul's badass motherfucker. This other dude is a badass motherfucker. And so when they come to clash together, you should not know who's, I mean, you kind of know because it's in a book, but like 
you should be wondering like who's gonna win the reality is first off this guy goes out and like beats up this old man and is like are you not entertained and it's like you beat up an old man okay like let's wait like, but is it the guy those those guys are all from the first movie they were and they're all part of the like paul like the atreides army they're all yes. like fucking yes. army guys yes so right? maybe use that big dude that he killed like first use that guy instead of the old man that he fought you know what i mean anyway the point is is that because then it shows like oh this this guy's fucking hardcore also because then paul fucking shows up and he's getting his fucking ass whipped because i mean of course you got to like lose the beginning of the battle so you can win the end in the film and I'm like, yo, this guy has just been doing like some serious like Mojad Mojadeen fucking stuff for I don't know how long. And then this like guy who's never done anything except fight and fight in the arena and torture people is now on equal footing. You know what I mean? So, for example, when you go and watch Gladiator, you see that Commodus actually is a wannabe, right? Everything he's doing in his training uh, as uh, as a gladiator is like staged. But... So Max, you're like, oh, Maximus is going to fucking rock this dude. And then you see them like wound Maximus right before he goes in the arena. So that sets up like how the fuck Commodus can do what he's doing. In this, I, it's just not believable because again, you fought an old man and this guy's an insurgent leader. And now you're basically on equal footing. And then Paul wins because we know Paul wins because he's the fucking protagonist of the story, right? So something ain't right. I will agree Also, I didn't expect that. So sort of like what you said about the ending. I expected that gladiatorial scene and the one where Paul fights him uh, to go on longer. Like, like you, 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 these are extremely important fucking plot points or resolutions and they feel rushed so that you can have another fucking three minute fucking shot of sand dunes or well, in, in, in utero. I think it it's contrast. Cause if I remember correctly, part one is the Jameis Paul fight right where he has to fight like a freeman kind of thing. oh wait so in, in six hours with a movie we're only allowed one good fight is this is this there no movie? that's what i'm saying oh, like that that's paul's at like gladiatorial thing was part one and then um and then part two is you know the three against one but but also it's kind of revealed as well that you know in these gladiator scenes um like prior all of his opponents were drugged and the knives were poisoned so that way he would he would never get hurt kind of thing and and him kind of showing what he can do now kind of thing is was the um the test or something but yes i i agree i i i understand what you're saying and i agree that that was the point but maybe the test shouldn't be like a kindergarten fucking which one of these is an apple you know what i mean yeah. like uh, but before i forget and we're talking cast i just want to know how much the fucking stars uh stalin stars car make for this movie because it probably was not enough like i was reading for his makeup it was eight hours to apply and two hours to take off so anytime he was in like they had to film him he had to take uh, a pill so he he wouldn't have to fucking piss and shit because that would have fucking took forever to do. It. Like imagine that. Like I'm fucking claustrophobic. I couldn't imagine fucking like being in there for like fucking eight hours, like just uh, like a fat fuck. Yeah, he wouldn't just be like. But I mean, really, he basically just floats around and then sits in that pool of goo. So I mean, outside of that, <laughs> at least they don't have to do in like wind sprints up and down the stairs or something well he had, he had to climb up the stairs could you imagine like fucking being eight hours and they were like okay and now we're just gonna lift you up with this harness and bring you back down say and cut great you guys i'm going home okay cut. two hours <laughs> <Take off. clears throat> anyway uh my basic takeaway i don't want to drag this out too much longer is uh do see it in the theater. Like, listen, if you like a big spectacle, you do see it. But in my opinion, you're going to be bored. I was fucking bored. I feel like, and this is crazy. So the critics gave this 93%. The audience is giving it 95%. I'm like, did we watch the same fucking movie? Again, yes. just because it looks pretty, it's still supposed to be like an, an and by enjoyable, I mean, like entertaining experience. And it just like, 
I was like, can this movie just fucking end? Except when the fighting and the sandworms were there. Other than that, I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. Uh, great acting. Uh, so far, it's got a... <laughs> you just spent fucking 15 minutes of this podcast saying how the acting sucked. And now you're like, great acting. No, no, no. Great acting by the people that did quality acting outside of the two I've already me- mentioned, which is Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya. Um, so they made this thing for $190 million. It's done as of the our recording, which is... a, a work. This, this number is going to be like a week wrong. Uh, it's already done 211. I think it needs to make five, 500 million to break even. Uh, I, I I can't see it not doing that. What do you like? I'm assuming you feel like people are going to continue to go and see this. People are loving this movie. So, well, uh, like that's the thing. Like nowadays you figure there's, there's what the 45 day window, right? Until yeah. it starts slowly start pushing them all onto um, the streaming service as opposed to Wonka, which is also like Timothy Shaman. Like <laughs> that thing. Well, that thing, just came out on streaming and like that released before christmas right like that thing had legs like as much as you're fucking saying it like that thing had legs for a while so i could see this going because what what major competition does it really have it has kung fu panda which is going head to head for now so i can see kung fu panda beating it this weekend but then it overtaking it next what else is coming out soon uh, nothing yeah. until Furiosa, which I am super fucking stoked for Furiosa. Well, just imagine that too, right? Like Anna Taylor Joe in Australia Outback or whatever in the fucking desert for whatever doing Furiosa and then just being like, okay, now you're going to go to another desert. You're like, well, you're, you're at this be... desert. Let's go over here and do this other thing. Yeah. Um, I think that it was a really smart move to release this film now because for the exact thing that you're talking about, there's really no other competition. So, like, anybody who's going to the movie at some point is going to go and give this film money. And, you know, it's funny. As much as I dislike the whole Wonka and da-da-da, $625 million against a $125 million budget. So, it also made fucking a ton of money. Um, Maybe Timothy Chalamet is the golden ticket. And that is our wrap for the day. Please like and subscribe to this podcast. Tell your friends. If you want to get a hold of us, reach us at the www.howdyoulikethatmovie.com. See how I ended the show without even like telling you I was ending the show? Bam! Oh, I, I just, loved it. Boom! Fucking I loved it. I loved it. crossover. Like, ooh, ooh. But that's the thing. Like his shit makes money, man. You can't. You can't. Like his movies fucking make money. The only movies that don't make money are of his are the ones you like, like that bone and all shit. They're like, <laughs> it's like Chris likes this fucking movie. Fuck it. Uh, I, that's why. That's why I think it's not us. It's you, because you're like, why? Why is the audience and the critics liking it? Just be like, it's not us. We like it, right? We understand what they're trying to do. You can only have one of these things in life. You can either have Chris like your movie, or you can make money. Choose, yeah. but choose wisely. <laughs> Production by Rod Shaver, Vader Monkey Productions.